Okay, welcome to the second project 2A for SAM 2019 with Access. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to File and Save As, and we're just going to go to Save As and change the name to underscore 2. I already had one there from before, so I just had to replace that one. I knew that it was a file that I could replace easily, but make sure that if you do replace any files that you're not overwriting something that you need to keep. Okay, so I did not print the instructions for this one, I'm going to toggle back and forth between. So step one, Competitive Swim Clubs Inc. is a national chain of swim clubs targeted to youth and adults who are or who want to be a competitive swimmer. You are the regional manager for clubs located in the southeastern United States. You are developing an access database application to help manage and analyze member and club data. Open the clubs table in the data sheet view and use street to rename the current address field. Close the clubs table. Street to rename the current address field. Okay, so clubs, double click. If you double click, it opens automatically in data sheet view. And this is address here and I need to rename this. So here's your table fields, and you get every, most everything that you're gonna need to change um, according to each field here. But I'm gonna right click on it, and I'm gonna get my rename. Just like you do in your file explorer when you're renaming file names, you can right click. So that's a street, I'm just gonna hit enter. We're changed up, so I'm gonna Close that down, and it's changed. So we didn't need to click the save button for that one, but just to be safe, I usually always hit the save button. Step two, create a new table in data sheet view. Change the ID field name to coach ID with the auto number data type. So create a new table, coach ID and auto number as the data type. So I'm going to create a new table, and this is going to be coach ID, and the data type is going to be auto number, which is defaulted for the first primary key. Add a field named coach first name with short text data type. Okay, so coach first name. So we're going to click to add, and it's um, short text. Coach, first name, enter, and another field named coach last name, short text, short text, coach last name, if you'll notice they give the name of the field first and then the data type, but actually when you click to add you need to choose what data type first then the name, so just take, be, be aware of that and a field named club ID with a number data type. Okay, so now I choose number and club ID, I think that's what it was. Is that what it was? Yes. Okay. So it says hint the coach ID field will be automatically set as the primary key. This is the coach ID field here, so this is each each one of these are a record. Okay, so you can see that there's one of one record because there's only one record here. The coach ID field being the primary key means that it's kind of like your SIN number. You can't repeat, you can't have two primary keys. So it can't be one and one. There's only one record that will be named one. And, um, a unique record that's going to be named two kind of thing. All right. Oops. Step three, open the swim fees table in the data sheet view and add the new record shown in table one. Close the swim fees table. So we're going to go to swim fees. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't save and close this guy. Save the table with the name coaches and close it. Whoops. Okay, so we're going to hit save. And when you do, it's going to ask for a table name. And I think it said coaches, was it? Coaches. Alrighty. Close that down. 
down and we've got swim fees and I need to add a new record in so that's just right here and that record is going to be 7 recreational 165 so 7 tab recreational tab 165 tab 200 2100 So I just added a new record and I believe it says just close the swim fee table. I'm going to save and then close it down. Step four, open the clubs table in data sheet view and delete the record for club ID C05. Modify the club name value for the record with club ID C02 using Upstate Swim Group as the new club name value, and then close the clubs table. So we're going to delete club ID C05 in the clubs table. So I'm going to open up club table C05. I'm going to highlight that one, and up here in, um, in the home tab there, I can choose delete. And I'm going to delete this record. Done. Then I need to modify the club name value for C02 to Upstate Swim Group. C02, the club name value, Upstate Swim Group. Upstate Swim Group. And then close. Alrighty. So save and close. Step five, create a new query using the simple query wizard. Choose the member ID, first name, last name, state, and club ID fields from the members table. Title the new query using SC members as the name. Open the query to view information, a portion of which is shown in figure one, and then close it. Something we could try to do is we could try to split the screens. But you don't get the full toolbar up here. So it's not always super useful if you're just learning how to do this stuff. So I'll just keep it um, split for now. Okay. All right. So I'm going to create a new query using the simple query wizard. Simple query wizard. So I went to query wizard, simple query wizard. Okay. Choose the member ID. So I'm going to go, all these are going to come from the members table, but right now you see clubs is selected up here. That's because I had clubs chosen here when I clicked the create. So really you should click right here on members, then go to create, but it's easy to change here. So I'm going to go down to members and I'm going to choose a member ID, first name, last name, state and club ID. Next, I'm going to title it SC members. Open the query to view information, which is all already default chosen there. Finish. Here it is. Okay, so you just created a query down here. and close it. All right. In the navigate or oh, step 6, sorry, in the navigation pane, rename the members form using member entry as the new form name. So this is your navigation pane. Uh, rename the members form. So here's members to rename, just right click on it and rename and it's going to be member entry. Oh, whoops, there's no space and they will mark that wrong if you do not take the space out. So, okay. Alrighty, step seven, create a new form based on the swimmers table using the form tool. So I'm going to be smart about this and click swimmers first and then create and we're going to go for form and it's going to be based on the swimmers table which we have selected. So just form and we've got it based off the swimmers table. So because there were 53 records in the swimmers table, it created 53 separate forms for each record. So each person basically, Damien is one. 
title the form swimmer info. So we're going to title it here, swimmer oops, info, and confirm that it matches figure two. So, oh, whoops, title it swimmers. So when you hit save for anything that new that you create, again, it will ask you to put in a name. And that's where you put the title. Summary info. Okay, so we've matched it up. Okay, so that's closing that now. Step eight, create a new report using the report wizard. Okay. Choose a swimmer ID, first name, last name, level IDs from the swimmers table. Okay, so we're going to keep swimmers cl clicked here, selected. And we'll go create, and we're going to go to reports, and we're going to choose report wizard. So they're telling us to choose the report wizard. So the swimmers table showed up here because I had it selected in the navigation pane. Now I go for swimmer ID, first name, last name, and level ID. Do not add any grouping levels, alrighty. Sort the records in ascending order. Okay, so we're sorting them by level ID and ascending. Yes, okay, next. So it says to use a tabular and portrait, which is what default already is. So we'll go next. Title it using swimmer by level. no spaces. This is preview the report which is default chosen and a portion is shown below so just make sure that you know you got it right and up pops our report. So the report is just one, one report for all of the 53 records. <clears throat> Reports and forms are just uh, aesthetically pleasing ways to represent the information that are in those tables. So for example, pretend that you were working at MON and you had hundreds of thousands of students' records and you had to send out um, the transcripts for each student. So you would send a query into the table of, say, table of students called students, which all the hundreds of thousands of students are in that one table. You would create a query based on that table asking to bring back um, any results for the graduation date being before 2021. And then they would be all alumni. So then you would get the query results returned to you and then you could base your forms and reports off of that query to create um, their transcripts or the number so a report would produce all of them. So the report would produce in a nice aesthetically pleasing way the number of alumni that MUN has from you know, the date of its inception till 2021 in one neat file. So that's what Access is really good at is presenting information, holding it, collecting it, getting you to getting quick answers for you when you're dealing with a lot of data and making it look really pretty for a form or a report. Okay, so whoops, there we go. It looks the same. Good stuff. Oh my goodness. Well, there we go. <laughs> Perfect, looks good. Split screen is not always the fun thing. Save and close any open objects in your database. So I'm gonna close print preview here and get out of that. And I just went to a, a different view. So we were in report view and now it looks different because we just went from print preview and there's layout view and design view. So there's four different types of views for the reports. This is what we default to. So I'm just going to save and close that down. Go over here. All right, we are done. This is a quick one. Um, save and close any open objects in your database. So again, just you'll see that when you don't have anything left open, there is no save button because what database is, it is a collection of files. That's why you get a weird little message when you first open it up because it's not like it's one file, like a Word file or an Excel file or a PowerPoint file, which are just individual files. This, these are all individual files. If this is a Word document, this is a Word document, this is like, this could be an Excel. You can import Excel 
um, documents to fit neatly into these tables because they have the same kind of format. So each one of these are separate files. So as long as you save and close each one of these, it just saves it as one big database. So you can close it down as long as you've changed the name to underscore two in the very beginning and you're good to go and submit it for grading at SAM. All right, we'll see you on the next project.